And it's time to talk Gaelic Games uh, once again. Another bumper weekend of action, championship wise, uh, here in the Northwest and in particular in Donegal. Brendan Kilcoyne, former winner as a player and manager with St. Eunan's, left to the Dr. Maguire. You're welcome to our championship preview again, Brendan. Thanks, Ashin. Good to be chatting. Yeah, good to be chatting. Some massive games, Brendan, on the horizon this weekend. We'll start with your uh, club, your former club that you, of course, went to. Uh, Many's a final and one with St. Eunan's. Um, when the draw was made for the quarterfinals, we did say that th this route was going to favour St. Eunan's a lot more maybe than the, the rest of the sides in, in, in the top four. Uh, up against St. Michael's at the weekend, the first of the uh, the semi-finals, five o'clock on Saturday. Um, everybody, well, the bulk of the majority of the people are thinking that this is a game that St. Eunan's should come through in. But uh, if Michael Langan's in any sort of form like what he was last last Friday night, it could cause problem for St. Eunan's, Brendan. Oh, yeah, Ashin, you're spot on there. Like, Michael Langan really is a top, top player, you know, exhibited by his, his nomination for uh, an All-Star Award there recently. And, you know, he, he's the fulcrum of this St. Michael's side, but there's a lot more to the St. Michael's side than St. Mike, or than Michael Langan. You know, I, I really felt they were very well set up defensively the last day. Ashin, you know, we were covering the game and, he, he they, they just crowd the D with bodies and make it very difficult for teams to get in them into them areas to get scores and you know Eru has suffered as a result of that of, of their defensive setup and they're, go, they're going to be hard to break down they're very well organized Daniel and Raymond McLaughlin have done a great job with them getting them to the where, where they are today because it's a difficult enough league and you know that they're, they're moving along and taking along nicely and a few players to come back into, Oshin. You look at, you know, Colin McFadden. We saw him play. We covered Kilcar, St. Michael's down in Towny last year. And Colin McFadden was a really, really good player that night. So he was. So he's to come back into the fray this weekend. So he has. And, of course, you have Colin Anthony. You know, if he can get over the knocks that he had, he'll obviously be a huge addition to this St. Michael's team. And also his brother Anton didn't feature last weekend. You know, so if they if they're at full tilt on at the weekend, they're going to pose a lot of questions for the St. Eunan's teams, Ashley. Yeah, who do St. Eunan's put in Michael Langan? Well, you know, th that's the one thing. Eunan's have loads of good defenders and very good, experienced defenders. You know, Keila Ward, Eamon Doherty, Aaron Deeney is a very good man marker, and um, you know. Daramul Gru has done that role around the middle of the field for St. Eunan's previously. He may be tasseled and Dara's played well the last number of games for St. Eunan's. He's a good vein of form. So they have options there. I don't know who they'll do, who will actually take it up, but they have options. And if it's not working, they can change it. But it's a huge assignment. Like, you know, we saw him kick 1-3 in the first half last weekend and basically put the game to bed. And, you know, he wasn't as effective in the second half, but the job had been done by Michael at that stage. So, you know... It, it, that is going to be the main, you know, question mark in this game. Can Unions curb the influence of Michael Langan? But there's plenty of good players that can have a right go at it, Ashin. Whether they're capable of, uh, of stimming him for the full 60 minutes remains to be seen. But um, they, have a, they have a very experienced defence the whole way up, you know, the six defenders, two experienced midfielders. And I suppose it, it's, it's up in the forward division that they may lack a bit of experience hugely quality, talented footballers up there. And, you know, it was the young lads of, you know, Kieran Tobin at the back. I thought an exceptional game last weekend for St. Junins, driving forward, got a goal. And, you know, young Conor O'Donnell really, he seemed to be the one that broke the mould from the point of view that he was prepared to take on shots from outside the box and, you know, or outside the scoring zone. And he kicked a couple of great scores. And, you know, then you have Shane O'Donnell, um, again, very effective and really ask questions so he did of the opposition defence. So, you know, th they have experienced players right up through the field, but most of them are at the back. And it's it's whether the forwards can break down this uh, St. Michael's defence. Now, you know, we saw Union's been very cagey in possessions at times and they're not prepared to take chances. And I just feel that they're going to have to take more chances against the St. Michael's rear guard. And, you know, we saw Connor Park in the second half drop on the shoulder, taking his man on. There's some very pacey pay players that can come from the back and ask questions of this uh, St. Michael's rear guard, but they need to be braver, I feel, than they were at the weekend, Oshin. Yeah, um, obviously that front six will be looking very much to, to Niall O'Donnelly. 
asked you asked you who's going to mark Michael Langan, who's going to mark Niall O'Donnell, who's going to try and keep him quiet from a from a St Michael's point of view. Yeah, I think it'll be the collective in that respect. You know, St Michael's seem to re revert to the collective defensive unit where they get plenty of bodies back and the the clog that area. So. Again, that's going to be the big question that they're going to be looking to answer down at the bridge this weekend through training to see who can who can mark them. And I'm, I'm not sure who will be tasked with that, but that would be a big assignment for them because you would have to feel that if you can curb the influence of Niall O'Donnell in the St. Junin's team, you're a long way near to stopping them really having a huge effect. So they are. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know who's going to do that job, but I was particularly impressed by their full back line the last day. Oshin, Liam Paul Ferry, who was flanked by uh, Stephen Doak and Jimmy Hunter, and if you were Donald driving from the half back line, and you know they have options, and they will they will have their homework done because I I, I know Rainy McLaughlin who's involved with them from working through the minors in the last couple of years, and he's meticulous in his preparations, and you know they they'll make sure that they have everything there now. You know St Michael's have got to this stage a number of times in the last few years and have struggled to push on from the semi-final and they'll be looking to stop that trend and they've come, you know, they've come a cropper against St. Junins in big games recently, including the game down the bridge a couple of years ago where I think Junins got through and scored a difference. It took a last minute Connell Dunn point to get them through that particular evening. Um, but you look at their performance against Kilcarra down Towney last year too, where they were hugely impressive and very unfortunate not to come away with the result. So they have a big performance in them and, you know, they'll know that now is the time to deliver. And yes, Colm Anthony and Christy Toy and Martel McElhenney, who was exceptionally good for St. Michael's last weekend, you know, they have a job to do, so they have. And, you know, they're, they're experienced in getting on in years, but they still have a lot of craft. And, you know, they seem to be in fairly good shape. Yeah. Uh, in relation to St. Unions, probably going to be a big bigger performance needed for the last four than what we've seen so far in the campaign for the, for the Cathedral Town men. Yeah, definitely, Oshin. You know that, you know, and e e even if you take around, you know, the middle third, they put, you know, Gavin Mulroney went long with a lot of his kickouts at the weekend, and just St. Nalls won a huge proportion of their own kickouts, and that's an area that I'm sure Rory Cavan will be looking at this week to try and tidy up and get a better return and getting that hungry ball around the middle of the field, and you know, they. they they definitely will need to up their performance on where they have been for the last few weeks. They've been kind of just getting through games. And they don't need me saying this. They'll be quite aware of that themselves, that they're now moving into, you know, semi-final, where the performances are going to have to be better than they have been heretofore from the point of view, you know, they've been leaving it late in games to try and close them out. St. Nalls, you know, when they score that goal to level and, and level the match up maybe seven, eight minutes into the second half, at the weekend, you know, that, that type of performance won't get them over the line against this resolute and experienced St. Michael's team, Oshin. Yeah, right. Okay, we wait to see what happens in the first one. What about the second one, Brendan? Uh, a big statement last week by Neve Connell heading into uh, another huge clash against Kilkiar. Yeah, huge game this sort is, you know, and in light of the you know, the, the, the 2020 final following on from that and the after repercussions of the objections and that, you know, this is a massive game for both clubs. Two best clubs in the county and have proven that over the last couple of years, Oshin, you know. Um, I was over at the Kilcar, our drag game on Saturday night, and I left that thinking, Kilcar, a great place here. They're playing superb football and they look really tuned in. And it's going to take a huge performance to beat them. And then, you know, we saw Nate Connell against Gidor when they put in what I feel was a performance of the ages to totally wipe out the Gidor challenge on Sunday. I just thought they were superb. So, you know, th this is a huge game, very 50 50. There's never anything between these two teams. You go back to the county final, you know, and I suppose the one thing from a Kilcar point of view, they seem to, just my memory of that game, they seem to spend a lot of that game chasing down leads where Nave Connell got the goal and they showed great character to come back each time that they went behind. But you can't, you, you expend a lot of energy chasing down the lead. And I felt that was the case with Kilcar in the final that, you know, Nave Connell controlled a lot of the game and got the scores that left Kilcar chasing. But listen, huge, huge game. And 
I'm sure all patrons in Gales in the county will be really looking forward to this with much anticipation to the weekend. Yeah, you said about it was a performance of the ages from Neil Connell, but how much a factor was Gidor's performance in, in making it look like a performance of the age, as Brendan, if, if, if you know what I mean? Because Gidor weren't at the races whatsoever last Sunday. No, they weren't. And I think you can only, you know, attribute that to the, the power of Nate Connell's performance all over the field. Like, they, you know, they epitomise the word team, Oshin, in that every player is a vital cog in this machine from cornerback to corner forward. When they're having the ball, you're a defender. When they have the ball, you're a null, null out attacker kind of thing. And, you know, that that's reflected in the fact that, you know, they've got two scores you know, they got both their cornerbacks, um, Kevin McGettigan, Nolton Doherty, both sauntering up the field to kick fabulous scores for them. And, you know, they have so much ability around the field. And interestingly, I was looking at the programme before the game last Sunday, like, and Charlie McGuinness is probably the only out-and-out -out forward that they named on the team. Listen, Kieran Thompson, you know, obviously is a top scorer in that. And a lot of the players that they had named and can play, and, and the game now has got so that players' numbers are basically a number in your back. But their work rate was just unbelievable. I watched Charlie McGuinness, and he, he chased up and down the field on numerous occasions to, to play his part in their defensive rear guard. And just as quick as they turned the ball over, he was chasing back up to get to the edge of the square. And then with the power of runners that they had and the Doherty's, you know, Eunan, Nolton, Kevin McGettigan, Ethan O'Donnell, these guys coming from the back, like they're, they're a formidable outfit, so they are, Ashi. Yeah. And will Kilcar be happy that everyone started talking about Neve Connell this week, Brendan, off the back of that, that performance and the statement that they made? Is that going to suit Kilcar? Ah, I, I don't really think so because everyone was talking about Kilcar Saturday evening until Neve Connell put in the big performance on Sunday. So, you know, but I, I don't think that'll be a huge factor. There's, these teams know each other really well. They've played each other, you know, in high-level competition games over the last number of years. So I don't see that, you know, that, that, that they pass much heat on that side, side of things, Oshin. And I just see this as a hugely 50-50 game. You know, I, I don't think these games go to a replay or extra time or penalties. So I think it's a replay and... Like, he definitely wouldn't be ruling out this one going to a replay. And I don't think the animal complaining because, you know, there's some there's such quality of players on both sides. And, you know, we've spoken a bit about Nave Connell. Like, you just look at the quality that exudes throughout this Kilcar team. And the relocation of Owen McHugh at fullback has worked a treat. Andrew McLean is kind of slotted in at centre-back. And they give huge pace to the centre of that Kilcar defence. And particularly in the transition when they turn ball over, they can really hurt teams. And Brendan, not forgetting about Ryan McHugh as well, have moved him further up the pitch into the half forward line this year. Yes, Sashin, uh, and and it's kind of he's added a real bit of punch to their forward line. So he has by playing in a more advanced position. And you know, we we know how good a footballer Ryan is, and he's been superb for Donegal and Clare down the years. But he seems to be enjoying the new lease of life that he's getting up in the forwards after playing a lot of his football kind of in the half back line for Donegal for both Donegal and Clare. So he is another threat that teams are going to have to cope with. And that's something that Nave Connell, you know, you can have so many good markers on your team and the more players or the more threats you have in that area. And with Stephen McBrearty's return to form, and I, I'm not sure about the availability of Mark Matthew McLean. We saw how superb he was in that second half against St. Junins out in O'Donnell Park in the first round game. So, you know, he definitely will add another bit of, um, to their forward line. And also, I think what was positive from a Kikar point of view was the return of Brian O'Donnell, who's been out for, a, you know, he's been out for the guts of 12 months or over 12 months now with an injury. And he came on as a sub the last day, so he did. So he'll be another sort of tool in their artillery that they'll be welcome to have, have back, Oshin. Yeah. And uh, listen, there's going to be a lot of fire in the belly of these two sides as they go into the game, as there always is. But what's the added factor in here and how big an impact is it going to be of all the stuff that went on after the county final away from the pitch, Brent, it's bound to have a factor in this game, isn't it? Listen, Ashin, I suppose from I, there's no doubt about it. Both camps will use it as motivation, I suppose, you know, in the lead up to the match at the weekend. But ultimately, it's about going out on the pitch and performing and doing the business and channeling that energy correctly and 
not getting overhyped about something like that. Yes, it's something that the lads themselves will discuss and Nave Connell will feel aggrieved, Kilcar will feel aggrieved, and both of them may use that as added motivation. But once the ball is thrown in, I'm not sure if it really will have an impact because both these teams are so evenly matched that, you know, if both teams are going to be hyped up about it, it's just going to cancel each other out. But they do need to park that basically when they get out on the pitch because, you know, having them, you know, you need to concentrate on the game in hand, Oshin. And the game in hand is a massive game between two of the best sides in Donegal. And, you know, they don't need that extra motivation. There's a county final at stake. They have Connell going for three in a row. Kilcar, I suppose, you know, avenging defeat ultimately in the, in, in the 2020 county final. So both of them have enough incentive and reasons to win this game without using that. But listen, it, it's something that we'll talk about and I'm sure in the camps they'll talk about themselves. But co- come through in time, I'm not sure it'll have that much of an effect, Ashi. Yeah. Are you going to commit at all to who's going to win this one? It's, it's listen. Like it, it really is difficult. Like I, I just I, I've gone with Nave Connell a lot of these games from the point of view that they they know they win these games that are down to the wire and they have a great knack of just grinding out the results when it's in the melting pot going down the final stretch. So if I was pushed, I would probably go Nave Connell. But like it's it's a toss of a coin. I've no huge huge reason other than what I've given you there. Then then that Ashi. Yeah. As we know, there's two Donegal Senior Championship relegation semi-finals as well. Killy Beggs against Glen Finn and Four Masters against Terman, with Bundoran and Glen Swilly respectively awaiting the losers in the semi-finals of those two matches. But we're going to end up over into the intermediate, Brendan, uh, where there's, of course, two huge semi-finals as well. The first of those is Dunlow against Neve Columba. I've seen in one of the local papers this week. I think it was the Democrat. That, there was a piece from way back in the 90s where it was a, a senior championship semi-final. These two clubs are now meeting in, a, in an intermediate championship final. And probably the two form sides, in fairness, in the uh, in the intermediate championship this year, Brendan. Yeah, well, I think, I think to be fair, the four best sides have got to the semi-finals in the intermediate. And, you know, Nenev Colomba definitely have been the form side the whole way through the championship, you know, spearheaded by that man, Aaron Doherty. Again, he scored eight points last week, three from freeze. But there's more than Aaron Doherty, from what I understand, to this team. You know, you have Ryan Gillespie kicked four points, Chris Byrne kicked two points, and Lanty Malloy kicked two points. And also they're driven on by, you know, the pacey Eric Carr uh, at, at centre half back and the experienced Michael Maguire. So, you know, they're a team that have played at this level and they've nearly got to the final over the last couple of years and having thrown up a nine-point lead to St. Nauz in 2019 to lose and uh, I think it was a six-point lead to Eru of Ali Shannon, both eventual winners in the previous two semi-finals. I'm sure they'll be hugely motivated to, you know, to get over this semi-final and to take that monkey off their back. They obviously have a lot of quality throughout their team and, you know, they've come through the tougher side of the draw too, Oshin. And then you look at Dunlow, who have played senior for the last number of years and they seem revitalised after going through a tough time in the senior ranks down in intermediate. And, you know, they've a good mixture of youth in that team too. And, you know, you have the, you have the, the Curran brothers at the back and Oshin Bonner, Darry Gallagher, Barney Curran doing the majority of the scoring for them last week. So, don't know they've a, they've a good strong physical side around the middle third too. So, you know, you would feel at this level, Nave Colombo have more experience of playing. Don't know. I know they have struggled at senior level, but they, they've got a new lease of life now in intermediate. And there's a great buzz down around Don't Know about their progression in the intermediate championship. Mm-hmm. But you just feel that Nave Colombo will really, really be pushing hard for this. And, you know, with their form and the fact that they've come through the tougher side of the draw, you would have to fancy that they will just have probably too much and just about get over done low in that game, Oshin. Yeah, what about Clohanilia against Bunkrana? Clohanilia, the side which just can't win in an intermediate final in recent years, Brendan, and it's, it's starting to annoy the men from, from down in, in Fulcara. But they've got a tough game on Sunday evening in, in, in Bally Buffet against the NHL boys. They have indeed, and you know, they've been beaten in the last two intermediate finals. You know, they suffered that heartbreak. And like I know myself, I was involved with Junins back in the mid 90s, and we lost two senior finals in a row. And it, it's hard to take, like, it's hard to keep bouncing back. But to be fair to them, they're back in the semi final again. Unfortunately for them, though, they seem to have picked up a lot of injuries to, 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 to key players. And you know, the likes of Kevin Mulhern, I think, is out, Shane Kern, 
John Fitzgerald, who will be their kind of talismatic forward as such. Darren McGeever, who play around the middle of the field, and Darren Furry. And, you know, that's a lengthy injury list for any club. But, you know, for an intermediate club going into a semi-final, it's a big hit. Now, to have kind of, you know, that Paul Sweeney has knocked in with, with the scores, as has young Blake McGarvey, who's involved in the county minor squad a couple of years ago, and Jason McGee, obviously, in the middle of the park. So they're going to need a huge game from the likes of Jason and Connor Coyle, Mark Harley, and coming through from the back kind of thing. But they have great experience, again, at this level. But I just, you know, them injuries are... The, the, it's, it's a big, long injury list, so it is. And they do very well to get over a Bunkrana side that seem to be just going through the gears. They have a lot of quality in the side, Bunkrana. Like, you know, big John Campbell, you know, playing full forward, scored 1-3 last week. Oshin Hegarty, Jigger. Then you pick Keelan McGonagall in the middle of the field. And again, they have two of the minor squad from two years ago, and Sean Dock and Oshin Crawford as defenders kind of thing. Two good lads that can work with them. So, you know, I... I, I I know Claha Neely will be strong favourites going into this one, but if they can't get a couple of them injured lads back on the field, you know, it might just tilt it in Bunkrana's favour. You know, you've big Peter McLaughlin in the middle of the field too for Bunkrana and Bruce Waldron at full back. So, you know, they've a, they've a good mixture of experience and youth in this Bunkrana team. And if they can up their game another level again going into it, they'll fancy their chances against Claha Neely. But, it really is a difficult one to call again kind of thing, Ashi. Yeah, okay. Listen, away from that, there's uh, an event happening, as we know, in Croke Park, Brendan, Cong special congress taking place. It's all about Proposal A and Proposal B. Um, the country sort of divided on it, but indications are that it looks like Proposal B could be brought over the line with a bit of tweaking, um, a bit of clarity still required over the next couple of days ahead of Saturday. Uh, what's Brendan Kilcoyne's thinking on it? Would you agree with either proposal or would you be just quite happy to go along with how the championship's been played at the moment? I, I suppose I'm a, I'm a bit of a traditionalist in that respect, Ashin, and I haven't played with Sligo for over 10 years. The dream for me was always to win a Connacht Championship. Now, we came up short in 1997. We all beat us by a point that year, but that was the dream for me. And I, I just... I don't know, Proposal B, which seems to be the agenda of Proposal B, seems to be pushed hard from the top. And I'm just not as convinced as a lot of people on it, Oshin, from the point of view, how devalued are the provincial champions it's going to be? We look at the Ulster Championship and the excitement and that that generates every year. And you've probably four or five teams going into it, into the 21 Championship, that feel they have a right good chance of winning it. And... That's going to take away a lot of the allure of that championship, so it is. And, you know, Proposal B, it will afford games to team, more games to teams through the summer and through, through the key period. But how attractive is it, is it for a footballer from Leithrim or for Mana to win a Talchon Cup or Sligo as opposed to, you know, going on and having a realistic opportunity of winning a provincial championship. We saw Fermanagh get getting the Ulster final a couple of years. Okay, we all blew them away in a day. But that dream of winning a provincial championship, I think, is going to be lost under this proposal B. And I do appreciate that there are issues. And, you know, these are predominantly in the Leinster championship where Dublin have dominated. But in any sport, you look at any sport throughout the world and you look at soccer in Europe, you look at you know, American football, you look at all these different sports and there are teams that dominate for a period of time. And that domination ends. It's a phase that it goes through. And I don't need, I, I just think that there's a lot of tinkering with both the rules of the game and the structures of the game. And I don't know if it's usually necessary. I think, you know, if heads were to come together, that a better a better scenario could be come up, come up with Oshin. Yeah, well, they've knocked a few heads together already, Brendan and, and uh the, the so-called experts have come up with proposal A and, and proposal B. But will any of these benefit Donegal, do you think? Aside from talking about maybe, and so disrespect to the likes of Sligo, the likes of Leitrim, who are seen as weaker counties. Is it in any way going to benefit Donegal? Well, it, it does afford Donegal the opportunity of seven competitive games, is it, in the summer, Roshin? And that definitely is, a, you know, that, that is a plus. You can see the advantage in that. And... Um, does it benefit them from the point of view that where is the Ulster Championship going to stand in all this? Is it going to be basically a dressed up McKenna Cup in the springtime that's not going to generate the same excitement or the same 
bravado that any man can go, any Donegal man, and you know Donegal have been successful in the Ulster Championship of late, can say I have five Ulster Championship medals, or you know, where is the allure of that going to go? As opposed to saying, oh, what what value will be on an Ulster Championship? Would be my question after it, Oshin. And listen, I I don't have the answers here, Oshin. I'm just not sure that the question in relation is proposal be the right scenario going forward. I don't think so, as I don't think Proposal A will work either because that involves moving counties around kind of thing, you know. So yeah. I don't have the answers, actually, but I just don't like, I, I'm just not fully sold on Proposal B. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people like yourself, Brendan, that don't have the answer. We'd like to hear the answers or get a more clear picture before they give the answer, but we'll we'll find out more on that at the weekend. Listen, Brendan, thanks for, uh, for joining us as always and enjoy the football over the next couple of days. Thanks, Ashley.